you never know like what the set you know if the set is coming with more waves or not you know so you always try to prepare for the worst you come up to breathe and you you don't know if, if there's gonna be two more other waves three even four you know so try to you know get your mind set for the worst and prepared for the worst and then when it's not it's just like okay that wasn't that bad that's Maria Fernanda, a woman of the water who swims with her camera in some of the heaviest surf in the world, talking story today on this Ocean Life podcast with me, Josh Peterson. Maria Fernanda swims with fins and a camera in waves that most of us won't even paddle out for. As a native of Mexico City, Maria found her love of the ocean through years of family trips to the coast to ultimately discovering her natural strength in big surf. Tied to Maria's passion for photography, this has led her on a journey to photograph some of the heaviest waves on the planet, such as Nazare, Pipeline, Todos Santos, and her home break of Puerto Escondido. Along the way, Maria has trained in big wave rescue, survived a broken leg in the water, built a global community of friends in the ocean, and continuously pushes her physical mental limits swimming in heavy surf. If you like what you hear today, go check out Save the Waves Coalition at savethewaves.org and learn about ways that you can help protect sensitive surf breaks and preserve them for future generations. Thanks for caring about our ocean, and thanks for being here today, sharing in the ocean life of Maria Fernanda. You're back home today in Mexico City, right? Yes, yes, back Great. in Mexico. <laughs> but you've been pretty busy. Now, we tried to do this podcast episode a couple of weeks back, and my technical difficulties uh, were strong, and we didn't make it happen. But when we did, yeah. we're talking, you were in Portugal. You were looking to get some shots in the water of Nazare. Yes, um, I went to NASA for a month, and well, my main focus was to get um, the rescue and tow-in certification, um, so I did that. It was a couple weeks, well, uh, two weekends, and while I was there, I was like, I've dreamt to go there and see the big waves, you know, and it was amazing because it wasn't as big till like the last two days that I came back. So it was perfect, you know, like it's the season started like be right before I left. So I got to see that and I got to shoot a little bit. Um, I wasn't able to get in the water when it was that big. I didn't get a jet ski at time. Um, you need to, you know, have some someone to take you out and everything with some time because by the end, everything is booked. <laughs> Oh, got it. So there's like yeah. a certain amount of jet ski guys out there who can take you out. But if they're all booked with somebody surfing or other, maybe other photographers, you're kinda, yeah. you're, you're on the land. Yeah. Yeah. I actually didn't see that many photographers in the water, but probably one or two. But um, yeah, it's mostly just rescue guys and towing the ones that are, I mean, there's not as many drivers that will actually drive in those waters. It's just it's crazy. You know, it's like nothing I've seen before. I, I've been to big waves, but here there's no channel and it's, white water everywhere and it's very hard to drive a jet ski with so much air in the water yeah and it's um, yeah it's crazy like it's fun watching the video clips from nazare watching the surfing which is un unreal but then also yeah. the guys in the skis like it's almost as like entertaining and, yeah. and just sketchy watching the guys in the skis yes and i mean that's what all the surfers were saying you know it's like you're trusting your life to your partner so you have to be very connected with them because there's not much time to make a decision, like literally life threatening decisions, you know? Yeah. 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 So, so you were out there for a couple of weeks, you were shooting photos, you're hoping for some swell because you as a surf photographer, really focusing on big waves, you were hoping to get a couple of days of Nazare. So what was it like when that big swell hit? Cause it was like all over surf line. It was all over Instagram. There was some serious like juice in the water and you who've been at places like Chopu and pipe and Waimea and Puerto and Toto Santos, a lot of other like known big wave spots. What was it like seeing Nazare just open up like that? It's literally so different. I'm, I'm used to, first of all, warm water <laughs> and <laughs> warm weather. And second of all, like, it's like a coliseum, you know, like you stand on the cliff and you see the whole action like down. And I'm used to like see it at uh, the same level, you know, or, or in the ocean or at the beach. Um, so it's just like everything is so, so different and it's waves everywhere. And I also usually shoot in Pacific Ocean. So this is also different, you know, like it, I, I think it's 
different. You know, the power that the Atlantic has, it's a little bit different. Um, so it's just like a very new experience, but I, I loved it. Just a lot of learning, definitely. <laughs> Really? I bet. I bet. And then to see those, wait, I mean, had you seen ever seen anything that big until no, that day? Definitely yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, the biggest I've seen is outer reefs in uh, Hawaii, you know, but it's, it doesn't compare to this. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and so, you go out, it's just like one wave. Here's like waves coming from everywhere. So it's, it's insane. <laughs> gnarly, gnarly, yeah. gnarly. Yeah. So that's cool though. Cause I remember when we chatted, you were hoping to get some swell and you got it just a couple days yeah. before you left. So did you get, do you feel like you got some pretty rad shots that you're, you're stoked on? Yeah, I got, I got a couple of photos. Um, it's hard cause I'm not used to shoot from land. So for mm -hmm. me, it's just like getting the angles and it's my first time there. So it's just like discovering which angles work, which, yeah. Um, Dawson, first of all, you have, you know, the little height and then you have to like see where the wave looks bigger. Um, and also another thing is every time the wave breaks, it's a lot of mist. So, um, a lot of fog comes in. So it's hard to shoot because sometimes you don't see the surfer. It's just like mist everywhere and fog everywhere. So it's hard. Or if you're like at sea level, you cannot see the wave, you know, like the surfer in behind because the, the wave in the front, it's, it's blocking. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm pretty happy with the wave I, that I got of Justine, uh, her biggest wave, the one that they were saying it might be the biggest wave uh, written by a girl. Oh, cool. Uh huh. So I got, I didn't even know it was her at the moment. You know, just shoot. You're like, oh, there's a surfer in the wave. You just shoot. And then after I, I realized it was her, and she's like, oh, I love your angle. It looks pretty big. She like wrote to, you know, tell me that she loved my angle. It was a different one. I was like, oh, good. Cause I had no idea where it was, you know, it was just like trying to find the best angle, but I had no idea. And so. that's a big shot. Like, I'm not sure if I've seen your shot of her, but I know other people got a similar one. And that's just like, that's a big freaking mean looking wave she had there. I mean, that must've been rad. Once yeah. you realized you're, that you got her on that wave, like you must've been pretty stoked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, I need to figure out who this, guy is you know and when yeah. i figured it was a girl I was like yeah you go <laughs> yeah that's so sweet so yeah. i remember we were talking too like you mentioned you were out training like you know on to be on the ski and how to handle you know being on the ski and big waves and stuff so yeah. were you like pretty amping to when you saw the swell on the forecast and you're like okay it's coming i got a couple of days like were you just really amped to get on a ski or when the day came and you didn't have a ski and you saw how big it was, you're like, uh, you know, I'm actually okay on the shore. Well, okay. So this is what happened. I had, I had been training, uh, before the weekend before. So I got pretty sick. <laughs> I got a really bad cold and I was dying for the entire week. I was like, oh, really no. sick. and so the last day of training is like, six hours of being in cold water wetsuit, you know, is like intense training. So I, that day I wanted to die. I was like, I don't want to go today, you know? <laughs> so by the time the swell came, I was still was feeling pretty under the water. So I was like, eh, you know, if I, if I don't go, it's okay. Cause I, you know, when you're sick, you don't feel a hundred percent. Like you're not as strong. You're not a, you know, you're not there hundred percent. And you need to be hundred percent for an occasion like that. I still wanted to because I mean, I'm like, I was there. It's an amazing experience, but I was okay not being in the water. I'm like, Meh, I could be here when I'm 100% and I think I'll be safer and I, I would feel safer, you know, if something ever comes, you know, and happens. Oh, you have to be sure. prepared for anything. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, when you're in cold water like that and you don't feel well, it just kind of amplifies when you're looking at cold water and you have like, you don't feel well. It just, I, I swear, and I've been in it my whole life, even today, it just makes you feel even sicker because you look at that cold water and you think about it, you're like, oh man, no, I can't do that. Yes, that happened to me. And then the last weekend of training, I was feeling bad. I was like, I don't want to go, you know, yeah. but I had to finish it. So I was like, no, 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 I got, I got to stay through it. But then by the time I like finished, I remember I took like one day off and I think a day after or two days after was the swell, like the big swell hit. So I was not feeling that good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's nothing but smart because you who have spent so much time swimming with fins and big waves and having to take care of yourself, even though you're on the back of a ski, if you're not at a hundred percent physical, like, you know, strength, 
the ski tip, something happens because things do. And all of a sudden yeah. you're in the water and you're only at like, I don't know, 50% energy because you're sick. Like that's the last place you want to put yourself, you know? So I think that's the right move to be smart yeah. about it. And I always say like, it's not just me, but you're putting everyone else in danger. You know, I yeah. remember when I broke my knee, when I was recovering, I remember one of the big days at Pipeline, all the guys are like, why are you not in the water? I was like, well, I still don't feel that I'm on my, you know, 100%. So and someone told me like the, the skis there they can take you out i'm like no i if something happens to me i'm not on my 100 percent, and i don't want to put anyone else in danger i mean yes of course they're there to help you if something happens but i i firmly uh believe that if you're not feeling it's your responsibility to say no if you're not feeling on your 100 percent, you know because it's not your life you're putting in danger it's someone else's life and that's not being um very smart so yeah so. yeah yeah, hundred percent. I'm right with you there. So after a few weeks in the cold water, the cold Atlantic in Portugal, coming back to Mexico, Mexico City, like, have you gotten back in the warm water yet? No, definitely not. I've <laughs> just been, <laughs> I've been working and just training online right now, just running and doing stairs and all that. But I'm um, catching up and work, you know, emails and stuff that I needed to yeah. um, catch up and yeah, just I need to figure out. Um, my have a photo. Um, expo soon so i need to figure that out nice. i need to pick another one up so right now it's more like work seat of life <laughs> that yeah, i need to yeah. deal with which is not my favorite but you know you sometimes you have to <laughs> that's right no that's part of that is part of life you know um yeah. so you have a really cool story kind of two parts to it that uh i'd like to get into so first is yeah. sort of again mexico city is not on the coast it's not yeah. down the street from a surf break or from the ocean. It's inland, right? Yeah. But you grew up there and developed this really, what I consider, strength in the water, swimming in big waves. There's that part of the story, which let's hear. And then from there, once you kind of got to that point, you then found photography and found surf photography, et cetera. So kind of two parts to this. So start by just talking about growing up in Mexico City and then how you've discovered the ocean and, and adopted that lifestyle. Yeah, so I was a swimmer since I was, um, I remember my mom got me into swimming classes since I was three years old. And then by the time I was seven, I started the swim team, you know, it was like I was training five in the morning before going to school and then in the afternoons, you know, it's just like hardcore training and I loved it. It was funny because when I was young, I didn't like competing, I guess it's just too much pressure, you know, for a little girl, but I loved training. So my mom would wake up every morning like, you sure you want to go train today? <laughs> you know, 4.30 in the morning, I was like, yes, I was so excited to go swim. And as you know, you grow up, I started liking more uh, the competitions more than, of course, training, you know, it's just like, you go through that phase. And I realized I like the adrenaline, you know, the adrenaline of the competition and everything. And also, every time we had like, some time of, you know, as a family or vacations and stuff, we would go to the beach. And my mom, she, she tells me, yeah, she's like, yeah, I remember when you were a little girl, like we would take you in the morning to the ocean and then you would not come out till we would like have to pull you out for dinner, you know? <laughs> I love the waves. I, and because I was a strong swimmer, you know, it's just like part of it. I just got good at being in the waves and the water. I remember even my dad was, was would be a little scared and like, uh, I don't want to, I would be in the water, you know, I was like, yeah. oh, I don't care. Um, I remember one time my mom sent me, I was like 14 years old and my brother was, I don't know, like 11, to like save a family that was starting to, you know, like panic and drown in the ocean. And I was like, well, you guys swim better than I do. Let's go yeah. save them. <laughs> Maria, go get out there, save them. <laughs> yeah. But since when I, yeah, when I was a little girl, I was like, this is awesome. You know, I just love being in the water and I would spend as much as I could in it. Um, and then photography on the other side, I always thought I wanted to study photography. And I remember my dad telling me like, no, I'll pay for a medication, but a real one. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that as a hobby. So I was like, okay. So I ended up going for um, administration and I got my bachelor's and everything. And once I graduated, I was like, well, dad, here's the degree. Now I'm going to go do photography. <laughs> so I got into um, photography classes. I remember, I think a year after I graduated, that's when I went to Hawaii for the first time. I went to volunteer at um, Surfing Donations in Oahu. Oh, cool. And there is where I met surf photographer Peter Sterling. And so he was looking someone to pass, you know, his knowledge on. Right. 
And so one of my friends was like, oh, there's a swimmer girl. Maybe she will want to learn, you know? So he came, talked to me and he's like, hey, you're a girl. I'm like, yeah. He's like, this is a pretty dangerous activity. I was like, I know. He's like, are you really sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I would love to learn. You know, it's just like, I love the ocean. I love photography. This would be amazing. But like, I never thought when I was younger that I would end up, you know, I always uh, thought of myself being a big CEO of a company or something like that, you know? So, but at the same time, it's just like my whole life, it's crazy how God works. You know, your whole life, you've been preparing for something like this. Cause since I was seven, I was swimming, you know, and like starfy and all these things. And you don't really realize till it's yeah. starting to happen, you know? It happens. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So I remember he was like, well, you'll have to come back to in the, in the winter because it was summer, you know, for the big wave. So I'm like, sure. So I went back home to Mexico, started working, saved some money, and then went back in the um, winter. And for me, it was like, I was a strong swimmer, but I didn't know about the ocean. So it was just a lot of learning. You know, I remember I would sit down with him and stare at the ocean at breaks, you know, and he's like, okay, you have to like realize where the channel is, you know, the currents and all these things. And where the surfers are sitting, where would you sit, you know, and all these things that I never really grew up with or didn't have an idea. Yep. He helped me a lot with that. And then I remember at the end, he will like make me swim, but um, he's like, well, you're going to buy a disposable waterproof camera. And if you can take a good photo with that, then you can take a good photo with any camera, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> I remember that's how I started. I still have, you know, the, the film because it, you have to get them, you know, yeah. developed and everything. What was, um, uh, what were you shooting that day? Where were you at and what were you shooting? Like, man, um, no, uh, Haliba, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, I went out in Haliba, and I, I remember we stared at the ocean for an hour, and then he was like, okay, now you're ready, go. <laughs> and he stayed in the, in, like, watching me, you know, yeah. he didn't go in the ocean with me. Yeah. Um, but it was cool, you know, I got to, I remember the surfers were, like, come up to me, he's like, hey, if you get a good photo of me, I want to buy it. I'm like, he doesn't know I'm shooting with every photo of the camera. Yeah, he doesn't know I'm a total <laughs> amateur. my first time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so were you intimidated at all at that point? I mean, kind of. Not being a, a you know a Hawaiian person or knowing that lineups, knowing all the people out there, new to photography, because there's an element too of surf photography, which is knowing how to get out of the way, right? Being in a good spot to catch yeah. to get the shot, but then not screwing up somebody's wave. And so was there were you intimidated at all and kind of like timid at first? I think that first time I didn't even thought about that. You know, yeah. I was just like so concentrated about getting the photo and I wasn't getting us close either. I feel like that comes with time. Like, yeah. oh, I need to get closer. I need to go, you know, get a, a better photo. But also when you go out and more, I don't know, complicated breaks, mm -hmm. you know, it's better surfers that are used to the cameras, which that plays a very yeah. important part, you know, like new surfers, they get scared once they see you like, oh, but then the pros and all the guys that are surfing, you know, like known breaks, they know the surf yeah. photographers will, you know, dive and will get out the way when when they are really close. Yeah, yeah. So they kind of trust you. The new surfers or the surfers that are not used to getting um, photos taken, those are the ones that get, you know, like they see you and they jump off the wave or something yeah. like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, I didn't know that till you know, you get you are progressing or going to other breaks and all that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you get offered by Peter Sterling, uh, who's just kind of a legendary surf photographer to get basically be mentored. He's like, Hey, I'll share mm -hmm. with you what I know, but you don't live in, on North shore. You get, you, so, so you spend some time with him, but then you go back to Mexico, you go back home. Yeah. And so how do you then continue to just learn and improve and, and go when you're back home? So I think, well, this, the past year I had met Bethany Hamilton. And so I remember my next year, summer, I went back to Hawaii for, um, we did a trip on the Kauai, Nepali coast. Mm -hmm. And I remember she asked me, she's like, hey, how's photography going? You know, because I had talked to her like, oh, I'm, I'm starting, you know, learning surf photography and all that. And so I remember she, she offered, she's like, well, if you're still want to learn about it, you know, and practice more, how about you come next winter, you know, and spend it in Kauai um, for some weeks and you can shoot me and practice with me. I was like, okay, no yeah. one really gets that shot, you know, being a new <laughs> to all this, you know, to the surf community, to oh. um, taking photos in the ocean. So I was like, no one really gets, no, no one from Mexico gets this opportunity, yeah. you know? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I was like, I, I need to take it. And that's when I realized I'm like, 
well, maybe this is a sign from God that I need to start doing this, you know? So that moment, I um, decided to sell my car. <laughs> <laughs> Needed some money. <laughs> yeah, get my camera, my gear, you know, housing, and bought, bought an old car. And I was like, okay, I'm going to buy my ticket to Hawaii and go spend some couple months in, in Hawaii. Yeah. So I went for a month to Kauai, and that's when I started practicing with her, you know? And it's just... I, I think it was amazing to learn in those waves. First of all, because there's not many surf photographers or surfers, you know, and they have pretty complicated waves too, like very heavy waves. Um, and going with locals, it's easy because you cannot really go shoot there by yourself or if you don't know anyone. But when you go with locals, they're like, oh, they're with me, you know, and they'll let you. Yep. It was a pretty good experience because I would go with her to like local, her local breaks, you know, and no one else would be there or shooting. So it was just like full on learning experience for me. And then the times that she would be um, busy, I would go with her brother and all his brother's friends, uh, Bob Borders. And they charge pretty gnarly, like. <laughs> yeah, super gnarly. Yeah. So that was also good for me, you know, training experience. Because I was like, okay, I'm with a bunch of guys. I cannot be a wimp, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and talk about the difference there, too. Because when you're shooting bodyboarders, it's like these guys are usually deep in the barrel, right? And so for you to get a shot means you're, in, in, in theory, in a pretty critical spot of the wave. And then when you're shooting surfers, sometimes you can be in the same spot, but also you're on the shoulder, they're doing a turn or something. So like, how was that then sort of learning how to shoot bodyboarders who are just pretty much always getting pitted? Yeah, and and they go to another waves too, yeah. you know? I right. remember that was my first scare, like going to one of their secret waves. And I was, I don't know, with six other guys. And I remember I literally, was asking for God for another chance, like, please don't let me die. Really? Talk <laughs> I about that. What was it like? I, I remember I just was without air, you know, it was just like three waves came and I, and this, you know, said I still had more waves. I was like, please, just one more wave. I cannot handle more, you know? <laughs> and I was so scared and I like legit praying to God for a chance. And then thank God, it was just one more wave and the set was done, you know? I was like, okay, good. Oh, now yeah. I can catch my breath, you know? But I had never seen it that close, you know, because it was a very, it's just like the currents there are very narrowly, no, of course, no lifeguards. So it's just me and those guys. And at the same time, like, I just cry and complain about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do that later when they're not around. <laughs> they're not invite me anymore. <laughs> I just have to suck it up <laughs> and keep shooting, you know, like, wow. okay. Just catch my breath for a little bit and then go back and shoot again. <laughs> right. And that's now, I mean, a fact of life for you, right? Is you know, any day you go out in the water, that that could happen to you again, you know, and you know yeah. that whether you're at, you know, I mean, and especially as I listed the places you go, there's the potential for any minute a set, even if you're in a channel, a set to swing wide or like place like Puerto, where there is no real channel, where it's, it's just, you think you're safe and you look out and you're not. I mean, so, so now how, take us from that first kind of scare you had with those guys uh, on Kauai to just the day to day. Now your own knowledge and experience and being and handling yourself in big gnarly surf. So I think first of all, you have to be prepared, you know, like I was a good swimmer, but I was starting and that, hmm. you know, as you get more experience, I'm like, okay, I, I should be preparing myself more. You know, I hated running, but I was like, well, now I need to run, you know, that helps your, yeah. your lungs, you know, expand your capacity and all that. Um, I also have taken apnea, you know, courses and stuff and just those kind of trainings is just cause you said you, you don't know when mm -hmm. it's going to happen, but it's going to happen at some point. You're going to have one of those scares. So you want to be as prepared as possible, but also being um, at peace, you know, yeah. with God and stuff. Cause you never know, you know, it's just, it's like any extreme sport, you yeah. know, I feel like you are pushing the limits. And so you have to be ready for, for what could happen, you know, and yeah. just, of course you don't want it to happen. And of course you prepare as much as you can, to prevent that, but it can, it can happen. So. Yeah. So there's, as you're, as you're talking about, there's two different aspects of, of, of swimming and being out in big surf. One is the mental aspect. Like you mentioned, you got to mm -hmm. have your mind, right? You got to come to peace with what could happen mm -hmm. and beforehand, but then also like when it is happening. So the example is you're sitting there and all of a sudden you look out and this has happened to you probably a lot of times and you just know, 
you're just going to get beat because there's this big set and it's coming your way. And you just know there's no way you're, yeah. you're not going anywhere other than just straight down as deep as, okay. for as long as you can. What's like the mental, what do you do? You have, you know, 10 seconds, five seconds, four, you know, it's counting down. What do you do mentally to just kind of get yourself in that zone mentally to be able to handle that? For me, I always pray. <laughs> <laughs> I always ask God to, go. <laughs> to help me. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think there is a very fine line between being um, scared, you know, with fear or panicking, you know, and that's where the danger is. You know, when you panic, you don't think. And you do stupid things yep. and you can die, you know. You, your mind is not working properly. When you have fear, that can help you and actually save your life, you know. So it's very important to distinguish those things and be very aware of it. I think, well, you see the set, you, of course, you, sw you take a deep breath and you swim with everything you've got, <laughs> at least I do. Yeah. And I pray through the process, you know, it's like- you the whole time you're praying. <laughs> yeah, let me get it through. But, and also be ready, because you never know, like when the set, you know, if the set is coming with more waves or not, you know, so you always like try to prepare for the worst. Worst. Yep. Um, you come up to breathe and you, you don't know if, if there's going to be two more other waves, three, yep. four, you know, you never know. So try to, you know, get your mind set for the worst and prepared for the worst. And then when it's not, it's just like, okay, that wasn't that bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So then yeah. The, the mental aspect is always really fun. And then there's the physical aspect, as you mentioned, which is, you know, you realize that for you to be strong and be safe in the water, like you just need to keep yourself physically fit. As you mentioned, growing up, you're a strong swimmer, but swimming, that's like arms and legs. But when you're now with a, a camera in your hand, it's almost like it's mostly all legs all the time. Is that right? So you really, it's your big focus on strength down low on your lower body. It's funny that you actually realize, but it's, it's so true. Um, when you train, I remember we would train, I don't know, of course I'm not in that shape. First of all, I'm getting older too. <laughs> it's been a lot of years since I used to train like that. Yeah, I, we used to even swim, I don't know, 15 kilometers a day, you know, as training. And I remember you try to save as much energy as you can. So of course you don't use your legs because your legs use the most oxygen because wow. it's the bigger muscles, you know? So right. it's, you use your legs, you're spending more oxygen and you're getting tired faster and quicker, you know? Right. So when you're swimming and training, you I remember I would just use arms, try to use arms and you just turn your hips, you know, and your legs help, but you're not really using it. Mm. You're you're not at least not moving them. You're using them, but not moving them and using much um, power. So it's just your arms and you try to stretch as much, much as possible to like glide through the water. But then, like you said, in the ocean, it's different. You know, first of all, you cannot really glide because there's waves all over it. So the water is not still. And second, like you said, I have one arm and then, you know, just the camera. So I definitely use legs and I have fins. I've never, I was never used to uh, swim with fins. So at the beginning, I had a lot of cramps, you know, because even your feet yeah. are not used to that shape, you know, of, of the fins. Mm -hmm. And it's another type of muscles, the one that you use when you have fins that with you are not using fence. Um, so it's definitely different. Yeah, it's just full on legs and you're using more oxygen. So when you're under the water, you know that if you're gonna kick with everything you've got, you also are using a lot of oxygen that's on your muscles and on your inside your body, you know? So it's yeah. all the oxygen is going to your legs. So it's different, you know, now when I train, I don't fully, I mean, sometimes I do, because sometimes you have to, but, um, Sometimes I just go with fins and try to swim. Like in Puerto, I do that a lot. I just go out with my fins, you know, and I just, I feel like a little mermaid because I, yeah. or like an otter, you know, with my hands here because I have yeah. no camera. Right. But I just to literally train my legs, you know. So I just um, swim a couple times, you know, through the lineup and stuff with just my legs. And that's how I train for yeah. having yeah. actually the camera. Have you ever had a time when you saw either you're in a situation like maybe a set was your it was his happening around you or you saw one coming when you just you really wanted to just <laughs> let go of your camera and use your arms and legs to be able to get out of whatever da danger you're in have you ever been tempted uh, to do that <laughs> no <laughs> i mean of course you sometimes want to use both arms i'm like oh i wish you know, when you go out and you swim or with a GoPro, even the guys that go out and go GoPro, I'm like, oh, this is like swimming. That's amazing. You know, you feel so free and so powerful. Now, it's like your mind 
is said to not let go of that camera as like your baby. So I remember even when I broke my 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 knee, I was like blasting him. Everyone's like, did you let go of the camera? I'm like, no. <laughs> I would let go of my leg, but not the camera. <laughs> That's your baby. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not, you know, I wish I was sponsored because I'm photographer. Sorry, you know, they just yeah. get free cameras and free housing. Right. So if that was the case, that would be different. But in my case, it cost yep. me my car. So yep. <laughs> I'm not letting go of my camera and my gear for anything in the world. Yeah. So how did <laughs> you break your leg? Time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. Um, so how, how did you break your leg? Were you in the water when that happened? Yeah, I was in Porto. And um, it was just 2017, because actually it's been the best year for me, at least. I've taken the best photos, the photos that I've loved and my favorite photos it was just like really good clean big swells with not much current so i i it was the best summer but i remember two days before i got pounded and i actually lost my camera not because i wanted but because uh, you know a wave um broke on me and it broke the leash so it like made me let go of the camera and then the leash broke and everything you know and then two days after and i got a pretty heavy pounding but i was fine you know and so they, two days after another big swell hit, and I remember, I don't know if you've ever been to Puerto, but you, when it's really big, you go out by the rocks, yeah. um, not straight up. And so I went out by the rocks and then you swim for a little bit to go to the lineup. And so that day the current was gnarly. I remember I swam for like two hours and I was exhausted. Sometimes, I mean, I'm a type or like Tahiti and you can swim for four hours, five hours. Cause you're the channel, you're, you know, but this time, the two hours, I was done. You know, I was like, oh, I need to go back. So, but the waves were too big. Like, I think I'm going back to the rocks, you know, like I'm not going to swim just straight in because I don't want to get pounded again. And before, two days before, I had that big pounding. So I was like, eh, no, I'll just go and risk it. So I swam farther away from everyone. So no one saw me, you know, and that <laughs> that didn't help. But, um, and I remember, oh, the waves are smaller over here. So I kind of timed it. I thought I timed it. <laughs> to swim in and then all of a sudden a huge wave came in and the problem with there is yeah waves are smaller but then it's more shallow you know it's so shallow like when it breaks you can feel the sand so i remember it's just like a wave came out of nowhere and like oh gosh and you have like a second or two to think what to do so i was like okay cannot swim in not swim out because there's you know i'm not gonna go anywhere (laughs) not enough time and then if i go down i think the wave will pin me to the you know sand oh, so what i did i thought it was smart you know it's like i'll just curl up in a bowl hold my camera you know in my belly and um i thought about covering my nose i don't know why i did instead of my legs <laughs> yeah and i didn't know how long i was gonna be underwater so i was like i want to save my you know my breath as long as i can but that didn't help because the wave broke almost in, like a meter in front of me yeah so it was like an explosion, you know? So it's like, I was all curled up with all the strength that I had and it like opened my arms oh. um, and my legs. And so with the fins, I just remember my knee going to the side and it popped, oh. you know? Oh. It was kind of, yeah, it was crazy. Um, so I remember that I was like, okay, great. Now I have one arm, one yeah. leg, right. you know? Oh. And, there, and there was two more waves coming. So I remember I just hold my knee you know the knee that it was broken with my arm so it wouldn't move because i could feel it like that you know gnarly yeah and i was like okay i just i prayed again i was like i just don't want to hit the rocks because i was getting closer to the rocks and so that was my, my fear oh, getting smashed on the rocks and i remember when i was getting close to the sand i like ask for help i was waving there were some tourists uh, going by i was like help help you know and they thought i was Saying hi, I guess. <laughs> and I was so pissed, you know. I was like, "Help! I'm not saying hi. I need help." So they just said hi and kept walking. I was like, "Great! I'm on, you know, on my own." <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh-huh. So I literally just like crawled up the sand at the end, you know. I was like, okay, I'm out. You know, I'm safe. I did not get smashed in the rocks. By that time, I like I remember I put up, you know, I tried to stand and started like hopping <laughs> to my hotel, which was a kilometer or so. Oh, jeez! And I remember some people are like, "Are you okay?" I'm like, "No, I think I broke my knee." But at the same time, I I'm not very dramatic when I hurt myself, and so I 
I think they summoned her. It was like, oh, she's fine. So they didn't offer help. I was like, okay, they're not offering help. Screw them. I can do this by myself. Oh, geez. You just went, <laughs> took yourself to the hospital? <laughs> I jumped all the way to my hotel. And so by the time I got to my hotel, my friends that know me, they're like, you're hurt. I was like, yep, it hurts a lot. <laughs> so I remember that time. I was like, at the time that I got there, like the adrenaline got me to that point. But yeah. by the time I got there, yep. I, it's so weird. I've never felt that. I feel like something like just went down my body and then I could feel the pain. I was like, wow. it's the worst pain I've been in my entire life. And I almost fell, you know, because I couldn't walk anymore. Like yeah. I used all my adrenaline. I was, I was safe there, but I couldn't walk anymore. So I was like, let's go take you to the hospital. They had to, you know, give me some uh, pills for the pain and stuff. And they took me to the hospital. And yeah, after that, it was like my summer was over. I had to get surgery. You know, it was ACL, MCL, meniscus, yeah. everything, you know, reconstructed and everything. So it was two months of being, you know, <laughs> no walking, just laying down, super depressed. I was like, what do I do now? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, you, just, you know, part of the process, you learn how to walk again, right. you know, recovery and PT. It was horrible i just remember the first six months it was like oh this is so frustrating <laughs> <laughs> wow that is so gnarly I and mean, you are so gnarly for doing that i mean that must have been that moment you know sometimes time sort of stands still you know and i can imagine you seeing that wave realizing it's going to basically detonate a meter away from you and just having playing through all the scenarios in your head like time slows curling up and then when that happens like that time freezing when you felt your knee just like pop you know like that's crazy like there's a certain times yeah. when things just slow down you know it's crazy because yeah it's one second or two but you like you said it it's it, like you have so much time to think yeah, through all, all of the yeah. It's like a moment of clarity when you're in these dangerous situations you know and there's a like and then you add the rocks that's another interesting kind of dynamic like there's times you're in the ocean and you know you're in a bad spot because there's current and waves. But when you add in like rocks or something like, yeah. and you just see yourself, okay, I could dive under waves. I can hold my breath. Yeah, but geez, I can't like not get smashed on rocks. Like there's nothing you could do about that. Like that's another, yeah. and that's some of the stuff I hate the most is when you're in a spot, when you know that these rocks are here and your time to get away from those things is shrinking, you know, and you almost feel kind of helpless-ish. Like you got to make a move like, right freaking now or else this could be really bad you know that's just a weird i'll take the big waves i'll take the currents but when you add rocks in there the whole thing changes that's that's exactly how i think you know it's just like i feel like like you can swim you can dive you can you know yeah. take you can breath go under but you cannot do anything you know against like you said rocks no. or something <laughs> free, you know it's just like you're you're still made of skin and bone yeah that's right <laughs> yeah a hundred percent so you've been in some, a lot of different, really cool big wave spots. And we talk about Nazare, talking about Puerto, like these are big beating spots, but you've been on a lot of other spots too. You've been to Toto Santos, you've been on a Jaws, you've been at Chopu, you've been at Pipe, et cetera. So take us through some of those. I mean, I'd love to hear, and I think the first time we spoke, you'd mentioned that Pipe was kind of the scariest for you in terms of just the whole spot. So just talk about some of those different breaks and just, you know, how, yeah. uh, what the challenges are. Um, I still haven't got a Jaws. Okay. <laughs> still on my list. That's right. Okay. But, it's on your list. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So at the beginning, I think pipe was really, really scary for me. It's just like we were talking about earlier for me, rocks and reef. It's really sketchy. You know, it's just like you cannot do anything. If you get smashed against that, you're done. You know, like I, you're definitely getting all, you know, open up and caught up and there's nothing you can do. So I think that scares me a little bit. And also the fact that there's 50 other photographers of pipe. <laughs> so you're not by yourself, you know, you're yeah. wrestling, you know, the waves, the current, taking, you know, like photos of the surfers that you also have to be looking around so they won't, you know, land on your head or something. But then on top of that, you have to look for a good, you know, spot to shoot without having 20 other heads and helmets in front of you. And on your shot, so that's kind of scary. But um, I don't know. I think with time, for me, the most challenging wave would be Puerto. You know, it's just like it requires more physically because you have to be in better shape. But at the same time, I think I'm getting more used to it because I've been um, spending more time in it. So I think it's definitely one of the most challenging. But at the same time, I'm getting to know it better. Yeah. So I think I, I, I love it, but. Uh, I wouldn't be there if I'm not a hundred percent on my, you know, 
capacity yeah. um, swim out there. Pipeline, you have, you know, the channel, so you can still sit in the channel and be okay with it. You always have lifeguards, you know, that I trust 100%. They always have key. So if anything goes wrong, you have them, you know? So it's that gives you peace of mind. I think backdoor would be, for me, more scary than pipeline because oh. <laughs> there's no channel. Yeah. And you cannot really see the set coming. So definitely it's a little bit more scary. <laughs> right, right. About to- total centers I've been once. I went last, oh, it's almost been a year now. I went last um, December when there was a big swell. And I thought it was beautiful. It's also cold water. So I actually, that was my first time in cold water. And it's just like having all the gear. It's different. You know, you have the wetsuit, the gloves and everything that you're not really used to. The place is gorgeous. You know, you're in the middle of the ocean. It's, you know, it's an island. You can just get there by boat. So there's not many people. It's just the people that you went with and then a couple others, you know. For me, it was kind of like why may I, how it breaked. I don't know if I can describe it so yeah you can also be sitting at the channel and especially when it's really big waves for me at least i want to see and i want to show in my photos the size of the wave mm. so you, i, I want to be a little bit more far so you can see you know the whole wave and the size of the wave and show the people that are enjoying your photos you know how big the wave was compared yeah. to the surface so i feel if you're super close to it you you lose the perspective and you cannot really feel the size of it you know and yeah. the power of it so i i didn't feel it was as hard or scary you know but i mean i went one so i would like to uh, go more you know and get more knowledge about it about tahiti i i love that wave <laughs> <laughs> that place really <laughs> yes the people there i think it's my favorite people <laughs> They're always so happy. They're super welcoming. You know, there's just like, they live in paradise. Yeah. They really do. And their wave is so perfect and so crisp. It was like clear water, crystal clear. You know, it's just so perfect. Yeah. It always breaks in the same place. It is kind of scary too, because it's shallow reef. I've never, got, I've never had a scare there. Cause I mean, I still haven't got, I've, I've gone a couple of times, but I still haven't been there in situations where I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is really scary because I think it definitely can happen. You know, oh, if yeah. you, you get, get taken by a wave, then you're literally in the reef. Yeah, and that would definitely be scary. Um, but I still haven't been in that situation, thank God. Hopefully I'll never be. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so far it's been it's been fun and it's good, you know, because you, you still have a little bit of channel. So, yeah, sometimes the wave comes more, you know, on your direction and you definitely have to start running swim, swimming for your life um but yeah i think it's it's kind of like pipeline but more perfect i yeah. feel like it breaks mostly in the same place although i think it is a little bit more shallow yeah uh, you yeah. know it's the race pops out right pipeline, so. yeah <laughs> and to your point about the perspectives that you you look for when you're shooting waves and i was looking at your website which will have links in the in the show notes and everything and have people check it out I agree. I see what you're what you're doing is after looking at your site and seeing the shots of waves, even it might be an empty wave. It might be a wave with somebody in it. You'd really do a nice job. And it's, I see now is of showing that perspective of the, the wave itself. Like the, maybe it's a big one or maybe it's just a nice head high one, but either way you do a really nice job showing the proportion of the wave. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Because, I mean, you see these guys taking, you know, with fish eye and wide angle, like, inside the waves, and it's amazing. And honestly, my hat's off, you know, because it's definitely scary, and it's just, like, harder to be in there. But sometimes, it depends on the size. Sometimes you cannot even see, you know, or feel the size of the wave. So it's it's another, definitely another, you know, angle, and every photographer has its own type you know and its own i don't know way they shoot and that's amazing but for me it's just that you know i want to i want to feel i want to make the people feel like they're there and they're watching what i'm watching yeah you know? yeah and make it more real kind of so that's why i like shooting a little bit more from afar you know it's just making them see the real size of the wave cool i mean i i start filming and sometimes in puerto when it's not as big i like shooting more uh wide angle because i don't really i'm not really shooting what i usually do you know so i'm like oh, i'll try uh different ways but when it gets bigger and stuff i want to show the surfer and sometimes the surfer wants to you know like i want to see that my wave was big you know so yeah. you want to show that right right <laughs> Yeah. Now you also have some pretty insane shots of uh, animals and there's some cool, really cool ones. It's like 
my bucket list, which is really large of things I want to go do. One is swimming with whale sharks. And you have some really cool yeah. shots of you spending some time with whale shark. Um, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, in Mexico, we do have a, a couple places where you could go swim with the whale sharks. And like you said, it's an amazing experience. You know, it's just such an amazing animal because it's so big. But at the same time, they're so gentle and they just like, carry on with their lives without you know noticing you there like oh you tiny human i'm just gonna keep doing my own thing <laughs> but they're magnificent you know like all those spots and those like i don't know lines they have in their you know it's so beautiful and so i went once to the quintana Roo coast in mexico okay it's my whole bunch and honestly i would never go there again you know, I went 10 years ago and it was amazing. It was just like 20 animals, you know, 20 wet whale sharks for like three boats, you know. So they were eating, doing their own thing, you know, minding their own business. And then two people would jump in the water. So we're not bothering them at all. But now I think it has gone out of control. Oh. And so you would see like five whales <laughs> or 10 of them and then a hundred ships, you know. It's just yeah. like, no not cool right. like you are bothering them and this is their house you know like this is their home and you're just it's like i don't think it would be cool if people come around my house yeah. you know and stop yeah, i sit and pet you <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's some other places in mexico you know i think by cabo and all that that you can still um, enjoy seeing them and swimming with them without bothering them yeah. you know it's just so I think there's, we have to send that message to people, you know, because sometimes people don't really know. They don't do it on purpose, you know, but just we have to respect them. Yeah. You know, they're animals and that's their environment and you are actually intruding. So if you're going to do it, you have to do it respectfully and, you know, be, take care of what you do and how you do it, you know, because if not, it's just we're doing it wrong, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's also becoming more apparent is like more uh, um, responsible kind of ecotourism like that, you know, mm -hmm. where the operators know that if they just mob these animals with people, the animals are going to like bail and then they won't come back. And then these guys won't have to get paid to take people out. So there's a lot more, I think, responsibility, not everywhere, but it's growing, you know, which is which is good. So then what about beyond taking photos, swimming in the ocean, like you're surfing, just fun fun just lose yourself on the water body surfing surfing how about those activities for you as well i like i like body surfing for sure i go swimming i do surf i don't surf big waves <laughs> <laughs> I like longboarding and you know because i didn't learn that as a young yeah. you know girl so it's harder it's a, it's a and you have to put time in it also and so when the waves are big i shoot and i never get to surf yep. you know so i never got good at it so i would it's funny because my brother lives in San Diego, so in California, I'll go shoot. Um, I won't shoot. I'll go surf. Yeah, nice. It's like, you know, good size wave for me. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, this is my time. I'll go surf. In Hawaii, I do uh, surf too sometimes, you know, when it's not that big. So, and then I... In Hawaii, we go swim with the dolphins, you know. It's yeah. just like we do a little bit of free diving, you know. Just, nice. I don't know, go visit the turtles and yeah. <laughs> all the animals that are in the water. Yep. And it's fun because you are having fun and you're just like it's recreational but at the same time you're training you know this is like when you go free diving and when you go you know swim you're actually helping your muscles and your yeah. you know lungs get better at it yeah so. that's the great thing about the ocean too and especially warm water warm clarish water is you can go have fun but also while you're having your fun you're also still building strength you're still building confidence you know so you're saying you can go free dive you can swim with the dolphins you can body surf all that stuff helps you with what you do which is your core thing of you know taking photos yeah. so that's that's cool it's crazy. Body surfing. i was doing this summer um part of when you know it wasn't that big and it just drains you it's yeah. a lot of work it's a really hard work yeah. I was like yeah um i remember i don't know if you know kalani the yeah body i've been checking him out that guy's gnarly Crazy. So he's like, let's go body surf. I'm like, okay, fine. And he, I mean, he, he is very, the best body surfer in the world, yeah. you know? And so he will like get me to go body surf with him. And then he will yell at me, like, you have, you have to go for more waves. I'm like, gosh, I'm tired already. <laughs> <laughs> You're worse than a trainer. <laughs> yeah. So what's it like? So for folks listening, Kalani, he's, I mean, he's basically body surfing Nazare. I mean, the guy's just, when I saw that, I was like, what? you gotta be kidding me. I mean, what's it like? seeing somebody 
out there. Did you, are you like scared for him when you see him like this little head swimming in like 40 footers and stuff? I mean, that those pictures are just gnarly. What's it like seeing him do that? He he's I sometimes you just think they're super, you know, like he's like Aquaman for me. So when you see him, the it's like, oh, he's fine. But at the same time, you put yourself in those situations like you think I've not survived that, you know, and I remember I uh, telling him last time. I was out in Nazareth and I was like looking, we were looking at the waves and like, I don't know how you swim in those waves. Yeah. I don't think I could survive that. Like my body would not be able to handle it. You know, it's just like if I broke many, you know, in a wave in Porto, which is not as like a fifth yeah. the size yeah. of Nazareth, you know, it's just like, I don't think my body would handle it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you will handle it. I was like, no, you <laughs> handle it. You're like Aquaman, but not me. Dude. <laughs> He just, yeah, and you know, he that's what he does. Yep. He swims a lot, he, he goes body surf for fun. You know, it can be two feet, three feet, and he still goes out, you know, and has fun in every size wave, oh, cool. which is amazing, you know, because sometimes big wave surfers are like, eh, if it's small, I won't go surf. Yep. He would have fun in any type of waves, oh, you know, cool. and that's super, super cool, yeah, to see. Yeah. And go, you know, bodyboarding, body surfing with. Uh, the hand plane with without the hand plane, you know, is it surfing, not surfing, you know, he would do anything. So that's when, like, oh wow, if you if you're able to do any sports in the water, that's really good for you, you know, because you're training all the time but having fun at the same time. Yeah, so. yeah, that's true. That's the neat thing about body surfing that I love. It's like my fallback sport. I started it when I was a kid, and it's like I still do it. Just like those days when I don't want to go hassle the lineup of like 50 people surfing. Yeah. Let's go body surf some little wedge for an hour, and you get a killer workout. You get barreled like 25 <laughs> times, and you just come out of the water feeling so good. No hassle, no nothing. You know, it's it's such a so sport. happy. Yeah, because sometimes you get so frustrated when you're surfing and fighting with 20 other people for the same wave. You come out of yeah, uh, you know, body surfing. You're like, oh, doesn't that's happen. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so maria so when are you gonna come up to mavericks and come shoot out here definitely on my bucket list on the radar. good good, good. Yes. Um, i was i was really scared before because of the water one of my uh best friends she went surfing mavericks i think two years ago or something and i remember she told me just like the water is so cold i had to cry the entire time <laughs> i didn't want to surf anymore you know i just got a lot i froze yeah yeah <laughs> I got scared. I was like, oh, but now that I've been, you know, to, I was in a month in, in Porto, I was like, okay, I, I think I can do it. Yeah. I can handle the cold. I just get really good gear, you know, to be warm and I'll be good. <laughs> uh, good. Well, good. Well, let me know when you're ready. I'm just about half, 45 minutes away and have a oh, bunch cool. of people who are always up there. So uh, you got a place to stay and a ride up there and uh, get you some <laughs> shots of, of half, Pillar Point and Half Moon Bay. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was it. Hopefully, hopefully in the near future. <laughs> yeah, rad. Well, Maria, I want to say thank you so much for coming back on. <laughs> this one, this podcast is going to work. going to yes. say a prayer and <laughs> sacrifice a chicken, whatever else I have to do to make sure it works. But uh, I really... It's, it's, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, and I love your stories and just keep cranking. I mean, uh, for folks listening, I'll put some sh links in the show notes to your Instagram, your website, and just thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, it was really fun for me too. And thank you so much for listening to me oh. <laughs> for a while. Yeah, no, that's awesome. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening uh, to another podcast episode. C can't do it without you. And uh, so thrilled to have you here supporting uh, myself and the podcast and all the guests uh, continually. Always appreciate a positive um, rating on your, uh, your podcast app, whether it be you know Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, you name it, just helps helps grow the podcast and uh, spread awareness. So thanks for that. And then any uh, social media mentions, always super appreciative. And uh, if you know somebody who you think would be great to have on the podcast to share the, about their ocean life, please hit me up. I'd love to chat with them. Or if you think you'd like to, let me know. Uh, email is josh at thisoceanlife.tv. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>